This video is brought to you by Squarespace. On more than one occasion this year, I've mentioned being intimidated by trees and feeling the need to steal their identity through fashion. Well, a new challenger has entered the chat. I now feel very intimidated by dragonflies. Uh? It began as all things do because of you guys. That's right, take some accountability. This is your fault. It began with one faded video premiere, a video premiere that has yielded many video ideas, a number of video ideas nearly equal to the amount of obsessions that it has sparked in me. I don't know why this owl is here or where it came from. Okay, long story short, basically bugs have taken over my channel. In that premiere, everyone was very enthusiastic about bugs inspired outfits. So I said, okay, I'll make a bug outfit video. I did. In that video, I made several outfits inspired by dragonflies and everybody in the comments just ate it up, myself included. I cannot tell you how satiated I am right now. Although just kidding, apparently not satiated enough. I made another wow. video a couple of weeks later and guess who showed up again? Dragon. And in that video, that was one of the designs I was the happiest with, especially the weapons. And I was like, hey, do you guys wanna see me make dragonfly weapons at some point? And I was met with an overwhelming yes. So while contemplating yet another unplanned project, I was on my dragonfly Pinterest board that I made. And I was like, oh yeah, I had pinned these super adorable, like armor style brigier corsets. And then it was pretty much all downhill from there. I made like a porcelain style armor corset in the past. I really enjoyed it. This whole genre of content on my channel is kind of just spiraling at this point. I am going to make a dragonfly armor corset. And maybe not just that because here's the design. So I kind of spiraled one morning last week and designed an entire little armor set based around dragonflies. The main breastplate piece is a cross between some of these AI generated fantasy armor sets and these beautiful little armor bustiers I've been seeing on Pinterest. Plus of course the candy makeup artist porcelain corsets because I'm still not over those. And the rest of the set is made up of fun dragonfly style plate armor and a little headpiece. And yes, eventually this project will include the dragonfly rapier and dagger from last week's video. This is just the general concept. I'm kind of going to let my whims guide me through whenever I get to the actual construction and paint job, but I do eventually want to make this whole set. However, for the sake of my sanity, we'll just be focusing on the corset and bracers in this video and save the rest of the armor for another time in the near future because I do sometimes need to sleep. And you might be thinking, Kira, that's really cool, but the final image flash on screen super fast and I just wish there was a place I can view static images of your designs arranged in a professional and aesthetically pleasing way. You know, a place that could help me to build a beautiful and professional online presence. A place that can help me track my analytics and provide me with an accessible e-commerce platform as well. Okay, you know this video is sponsored by Squarespace. But fun fact, they do offer dozens of professional and customizable website and portfolio templates so that you have a place to display your artwork as well. You can set up a website or portfolio with Squarespace in just about an hour. Drop in your portfolio pieces and automatic image scaling will automatically arrange your pieces, giving you an instantly professional gallery. Then you can customize everything from text to colors to personal branding with their high customization and audio, video, and image blocks. And if you need specific website pages to highlight special areas of your brand, they can do that as well. I have a portfolio for both my illustrative work and for my costume and clothing designs. And when you're done with that, you can launch your merchandise on an e-commerce platform hosted right alongside your portfolio site. And if you find purchasing stock of your product Product or making it at home a little overwhelming, no worries, because you can also link it to a print-on-demand service that handles the manufacturing for you. And finally, if any of that sounds confusing, Squarespace has award-winning 24-hour customer support, so their team can assist you on your schedule, even if that means in the middle of the night. So if you would like to create a place to display your beautiful artwork and sell your wares, head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash pricklyalpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's attempt to just get a cease and desist from nature. Let's start patterning. So I went about patterning the base in a very similar way that I did for my porcelain corset. Just a very organic process where I was piecing everything together and sort of just trying it on my body and seeing what fits. But I did do things a little bit different this time because I started off with one of my pre-made corset patterns that I have in my very chaotic and messy folder. I did that basically to save time and because it's wildly practical, I have them, I know that they fit, so uh, why not use them? And then I also did some Frankensteining of poster board pieces to get the spikes that are on the cups and a couple of the other little details on the corset. So thankfully, doing this was super quick, a lot quicker than it went with my porcelain corset. And after about an hour of fiddling, we have this thing. And we are essentially ready to take it apart and cover it in warble. Which hopefully 
shouldn't take too long, which also do happen to be my famous last words, so we'll see about that. Also, curious minds might be wondering, for a corset, why are we starting with poster board and why are we covering it in plastic? Well, that's because this is supposed to be more of an armor piece. It's not supposed to be a traditional corset. It's not really supposed to give you like waist reduction. We're making armor today. And I use poster board as a base. Number one, because it's super dirt cheap. And number two, because it gives warbler something structural to sit on top of whenever you're heat forming it. That way your warbler pieces don't get all like wrinkled and disjointed and ugly. A lot of people use foam, but I use this because I'm cheap. Hi, executive producer. Can you bless the project? No, apparently she can't. Oh no. I'm a little nervous now. She didn't bless the project. So let's cover this thing in more blood. Now, time for a short iteration of how to make a bracer because I forgot to show you guys how to do that last time. Grab your wrist measurement, forearm measurement, and forearm length, and then draft them onto your material of choice in a trapezoidal shape, and then you cut it out. That, that's it. You have a bracer now. You can either glue up this side or lace it up, which is what I'll be doing. While I was doing that nonsense, I also cut out all of the foam tops for the bracers and hip pieces. All right, we've got everything cut out. I'm about to be able to go grab my trusty heat gun and start assembling all of this. And while I was at it, I of course went and cut out these like dragonfly looking hip pieces that are gonna be coming off the corset. Then I also made some bracers real quick, which are the easiest things ever to make. And um, congratulate me because I managed to do it on camera this time. So now, Maybe you guys know how to make a bracer. <laughs> They're gonna close with lacing, by the way. That's how this makes sense. Speaking of making sense, you might be like, Kira, what is exactly going on right here? Well, I opted to make these out of foam because first of all, it's cheap. It just like, it doesn't need the structure of warbler. So foam is good. I'm just gonna stop you right there. Some of y'all in the comments last time I made something out of warbler thought it was really funny that I was saying the word warbler so much. I don't know what else to call it. That's what the product is called. This is what it is. This is how it's spelled in a lot of y'all weren't even spelling it right. Play your drinking games if you want to. I'm gonna be saying the word warbler a lot in this video and I apologize. I just, I don't know what to do about it. It's what it's called. So these need to be glued together with some barge cement, which is why I have my little respirator here. So before I grab my heat gun and start assembling that, I'm gonna run outside real quick and I'm just, I dropped things. And I'm gonna glue these together and then I'm gonna add the little pattern with my wood burning tool. Let's go avoid some toxic fumes because we're actually wearing a respirator this time. Welcome back indoors. I forgot my thing. These guys are all prepped now. I did my little dragonfly texture and you know, it kind of looks like my wood bark texture, but we used a reference, we tried, and I still think it looks good. Good enough at least. So now it is time to break out the heat gun and take care of these pieces.
Surprisingly, that night was a whirlwind of productivity. For once, I accomplished all the goals I set out to achieve that day. Not only did I get all of my al dente pasta pieces assembled into one large corset-shaped tube of penne, I also went about smoothing my penne out with some foam clay. I added some to the cups to smooth those out, some to the center to raise those details per my design, and some to the sides as well as a foundation for that second set of dragonfly wings. I smoothed all that out with some water, which honestly felt like a bit of an awkward step, and hid all of those pesky little seams with some quick seal, which left my al dente pasta looking like a beautiful piece of marbled black bean rigatoni. I know it seems like something suspicious is going on here, but I promise this video is not sponsored by Italians. Hello. So we have, believe it or not, actually hit tonight's goal. Everything is still very wet, so I'm trying not to ruin the entire thing. The base is basically done. We have foam clay on there. We have a little bit of quick seal on there and I can't even do anything until this dries overnight. I am going to let this do that. Oh, hello. You don't need to be over here right now. There's clay that hasn't dried and I don't trust you not to get a little bit too curious. So like I was saying, I'm gonna let this dry overnight and then I'm going to get to decorating it tomorrow. I do have a little bit of sanding to do because the job is like a bit messy but i think it's gonna be worth it if i just you know take my orbital sander to it and go in anyways i'm going to go eat some korean fire noodles and probably play some video games so i will see you guys tomorrow Hello there. It is the next day and I'm gonna just work on decorating this thing today, which is pretty exciting. But before I do that, I need to do a little bit of sanding to make sure that my sculpting work isn't all lumpy. And I also need to pre-make a bunch of these hot glue filigree molding pieces so that whenever I'm decorating it, I don't have to stop and wait for hot glue to dry. So I have some illustration client work to do. So I'm gonna work on this intermittently while I do that. And then hopefully have a relaxing evening of glue and stuff onto my corset, like a very excited kindergarten student. Heck yeah, let's do it. I feel like that's probably enough for now just to get me started so that I can decorate and I'll make more while I decorate. And I have changed into a tank top because as my brother says, the big hot is here and I have to go sand outside. And I didn't want to be miserable and sweaty. I mean, I still will be miserable and sweaty. I'll just be slightly less miserable and sweaty. <laughs> you know that you live in a hot climate whenever the locals refer to it like it's a plague whenever it comes. Let's go get covered in foam dust. <sighs> Fun. Cool, 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 cool. So I didn't really record much of it because sanding was, as I expected, annoying. It didn't really go the way I wanted it to because I didn't really have the tools to do it right. Apparently the only sandpaper that I have is like a super fine grit, so it wasn't really doing much and it was kind of tearing up my phone. You know, we busted out the orbital sander that didn't do a whole lot because we were not working with flat surfaces. And as far as Dremels go, I just said, you know what, I don't really care. I feel like a Dremel could have potentially ruined the entire thing. So I basically hand sanded and got it to the point where I was not throwing up by looking at it. <sighs> That's so negative. I figured that at this point, the best way to get the smoothest finish possible prior to decorating this thing was to just try to prime the heck out of it. Last time I did this, I did not prime the pieces prior to adding filigree and I feel like I probably should have because it still has that like rough warbler texture and I don't like sanding warbler. It's just like kind of a pain. So instead I figured just adding a bunch of primer would get me a pretty smooth finish. I sprayed down all of the pieces, including the bracers and the little hip pieces and voila, this is how she's looking so far. Pretty good, honestly. Um, it's giving sexy Darth Vader. Kind of covered more sins than I expected it to. Like, don't get me wrong, she's still lumpy, but it's like, it's kind of a cute lumpy. So believe it or not, I'm not gonna stop there with priming. I am gonna decorate in a minute here, but I think tomorrow I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna buy some Plasti Dip so that I can give these like a proper rubberized priming because I don't normally do that and then my stuff like gets all cracked up and I don't want that to happen, so. 
let's stay. Now I'm just gonna actually decorate this thing. I've been teasing it like all day and now I can finally do it. Let's have a nice little Breaking Bad style decoration montage and make this thing look super cool with ungodly amounts of hot glue. Okay, I know you guys are simply dying to know my decorating method for this, so I'll share my secrets. Okay, so here's how you do it. You grab a piece and you put some glue on it. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. I'll be signing books in the back by the soda machine. Okay, if you want to put a little bit more thought into it, consider piecing the filigree molds together in interesting ways. I always liken this step to a puzzle since it's really just figuring out which pieces fit right together, but I normally start with larger statement pieces for the bigger areas and fill in gaps around them with smaller pieces. Since hot glue is so easy to trim or tear, I also cut pieces to fit specific areas and Frankenstein them together. Sometimes I'll only partially fill a mold with hot glue to get a particular section of the molding. There are no rules. Just pure, creative kindergarten craft time. Kindergarten craft time, band name called it. In short, I highly recommend this experience. It's a good time. The one thing I do normally consistently do is frame the edges of a piece with the little skinny molding boys. It really helps to make the piece look like it might be set dressing for Sofia Coppola's Marie Antoinette film. And that's kind of the goal with everything I make, honestly. <laughs> Microphone. Paint is what we're focusing on next. Here it is. I went to the Walmart and I bought myself some more metallic paint because I think that I was out and then also some primer because we're still looking like a little bit lumpy. That's not the vibe for 2023. No lumps. Not this year. Yes, I am anxious. I don't know why. We will not be discussing why. <laughs> Let's prime these. Flip up your hair to keep the anxiety contained. We don't want it dripping all over our corset. <laughs> I think we need to talk about the Met Gala. For anyone who doesn't know, the Met Gala is an annual event where the rich and famous congregate and like eat apples or something, I don't know. In all seriousness, it's an annual fundraising event for the Costume Institute of the Metropolitan Museum of Art and there's a theme every year relating to the featured Met exhibition and this year it was Carl Lagerfeld, A Line of Beauty and the theme was in honor of Carl. This was a controversial theme because Carl was kind of a questionable dude, but he was also kind of a big part of modern fashion. Anyways, I don't know anything about actual fashion, but allow me to judge some looks for you. Also, I keep calling him Carl Lagerfeld in this recording and I don't know why because I know that's not how you say his name. Anyways. Okay, so obviously there are a lot of stellar looks, you know, Rihanna looked amazing, Cardi B, Doja Cat. I think Anne Hathaway was my personal favorite. She just looked absolutely amazing. I think that's the general consensus of the internet even. I loved Pedro Pascal and his little like sneaky knee. I also really loved Janelle Monae's look. I just thought it was so different and inventive and it really suited her. Also like Olivia Rodrigo, Bella Ramsey, basically everyone who was wearing Tom Brown just looked really really cool. I think that they really captured the theme of like Chanel and then also bringing some other references into it. I also feel like they really captured the personal styles of each of the like individuals wearing Tom Brown. I just thought that was a really good lineup for the Met Gala. Michelle Yeoh looked Dunning, like ethereal, fabulous, on theme. I love the combination of like the shirt collar with like the very ethereal flowing sleeves and then this like little black overskirt number. It's definitely another one of my favorites. Okay, like I said, I love Janelle Monet's look, but is it just me or is it also kind of giving the mayor from Nightmare Before Christmas? Tell me I'm wrong. Also, some of the men actually really showed up this year. We got some really strong looks from Conan Gray, Sean Combs, freaking Alton Mason. <laughs> His Chanel bride look was like 
Eventually, everything was taking too long and that paint was just about dry, so I just decided to make a tier list. This is what that looked like, and I'm sure that you can see it just fine. The tier list also didn't have some of my favorite looks, which is disappointing, but what are you gonna do? Also, apparently, Pedro Pascal almost wore a lip ring, and I'm disappointed that he didn't because I feel like that would complete his chaotic uncle character arc. Don't you love how confusing it is, like the order that I film my videos in? Never let them know your next move. Anyways, the pieces are now dry, and... Hello, my fellow entomology enthusiasts. It's the next day. It's beautiful outside, the sun is shining, and it's insufferably hot. So I am eating a pickle for refreshment. It's actually really pleasant out here under the shade, I have to say, but gotta get the pickle off of my fingers. Regardless, it is painting day, so we are going to make like, the cave dwelling creatures that we are and just hang out inside for that. And I'm actually really excited for this stage of the project because I have something not up my sleeve, but in my pocket. What is it? <sighs> effects paint. Okay, it's not like the most exciting thing in the world, but it is color shifting effects paint. And it's supposed to be flexible, which is also really nice so that my paint doesn't crack like it normally does. Also in my pocket, wait for it. <sighs> I have some folk art extreme glitter. These are mostly just items that are very pleasing to my magpie brain that I'm gonna now get to put all over my pretty corset. Very exciting developments in the cave today. So, part of the reason I even wanted to do this project in the first place is to allow myself to do a little bit of paint job experimentation. My cord is stuck. I did go and buy these two, but I also have a bunch of other like fancy iridescent paint left over from other projects and I just kind of want to like mess around and experiment a little bit and figure out like some cool combinations for a cool paint job. I have a design I'm acknowledging like that's kind of what I'm going for, but honestly in the end this is a little bit of a blank canvas because dragonflies I see as being very like abstract. They can be so unique in their wing pattern so I just want to kind of create something that is within that spirit. Also I have a paint that's literally called dragonfly glaze which I feel like is gonna be just perfect for this. We are gonna play around and experiment and have a good time but I also want to show a little bit of restraint just because I don't want it to turn out bad. But wait, there's more. I have the magpie brain that I have. And once this is done being painted, I'm also going to glue and or drape a bunch of iridescent beads from it. I have 600 of these lovies right here, which is a very exciting concept. Let's get started and put some shiny paint all over this corset. Somehow, miraculously, the paint job turned out way better than I expected, like I absolutely love it. And the organic process of just figuring out what each panel of the piece needed rather than sticking to the design was definitely the way to go. Highly recommend winging it and following your vague instincts. Also, I forgot to do this the night of, but I actually went back and gave the filigree a dark wash on this corset, and since I didn't leave the wash on long enough for it to dry, it didn't dull the gold too much. So I think I will go back and do this on my original porcelain corset. It definitely adds a lot more depth to the piece and prevents it looking like, you know, that fake Barbie plastic gold. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Hello and welcome to the final day. Completed all of the painting last night. It frankly looks way better than I expected it to and I am very excited for today. Mainly 
because today is all about shiny things and putting them all over this corset. I also, of course, have to fit the corset and then also put like grommets and grommet holes in it, which is like not a step that I'm super looking forward to, as you guys know. So let's just do that real quick. Well, that was relatively painless. Welcome back. Let's now go forth with hot glue and reckless abandon and just have a nice little afternoon. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you the safe capture and release of a home intruder. Oh, here we go, we're on the move. <laughs> that did not work. See, now this is not a convenient spot. I don't wanna hurt your little legs. Sir, your legs are in danger. There we go. You can move that way a little. I cannot get you under there. I did not manage to capture it on camera, but I'm fairly certain that our friend is in here. Okay, hopefully extradition spider is now complete. There we go. I'm sorry you have fuzzies on you. Um, go be free. Friend is now free. Now, as I recall, we have bedazzling to do. First, we remove a hairy obstacle. Would you like to tell the people what you said that this reminded you of? Oh, what, right now? Yeah, right now. Is it recording? It is recording. Oh. Welcome to the video. It looks like that scale that they always like wish on from Dragon Tales. From Dragon Tales. So that they can go to Dragon Land. He says, I'm essentially making a Dragon Tales core costume right now. It has the He's same, not wrong. <laughs> it has that same like pink and blue like, like radiant coloration. <laughs> Corporate needs you to find the difference between this picture and this picture. It's the same picture. Thank you for your contribution. Oh, you're the most welcome. <laughs> so I finally got to adding the sparkle and in theory, I think this would have really elevated the piece and made it look super fancy, but I opted for some more colorful rhinestones to make it look more like an iridescent dragonfly wing. And I'm not entirely sure how I feel about that versus the original paint scheme. Had I stuck to just white iridescent rhinestones, I think it would have probably turned out looking more intentional and cohesive, but I don't know. The multicolor look is kind of growing on me. I just really liked the original paint scheme. What do you think? Did I ruin this entire corset? While you ponder that, please enjoy this clip of me bashing Jared Leto's Met Gala look. And then Jared Leto, who just showed up in his Chopette fursuit, thinking that he did something. I think he thought that it would be really funny for the internet people and be like a meme, but also... Doja Cat also showed up in a little Chopette number, which looks way better. It's actually serving fashion. And in interviews, she just like would meow. Who is, wait, so who made it? Wow. Wow. Okay, so something a little different. Which I also think served higher meme value than what Jared Leto did. He even commit to the first suit. He also changed so that he would have more of like a red carpet appropriate look, or should I say Colgate carpet? Cause it's like so ugly this year. Why do they keep making these decisions? What's with these beige carpets? Gross, disgusting, jails. Anyways, at this point she was almost done, but the next morning I did give her a nice thick coat of clear glaze to protect my paint job and give it a glossier feel. Have we approached too much? Has my magpie brain led this past the threshold of sparkly shiny into the threshold of like Lisa Frank children's jewelry? Quite possibly, but I don't care. I genuinely love what's going on here. And so my friends, it's reveal time.
Welcome to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I always have a good time making weird stuff like this, so thank you for being along the ride with me. If you would like to see me make the rest of this costume armor set, please subscribe and stick around. I don't normally say that, but if you don't do that, you might not see the rest, and wouldn't that just be a big old shame? I'm not going to be making this series consecutively because I kind of want to break from this and just to like throw out a little bit of variety, but they will be coming at some point. As always, the biggest thank you for the success of this project goes to my patrons, and especially my executive producers, both the feline and human varieties. Small Creeper, Meg Litch, Cat, Dodo, Zyel S, Shay Lee, Gray, The Cat's Bark, Alwyn Hayes, Thea Maia, Ruled by Pluto, Agent Sketchy, Wolven underscore Arts, Corvid Dome, Lovisa, Eloquent Silence, In the Galaxy, Eno Sign, Meeks Hunter, Megan Penland, India Gloom, Hypnos, Reflings, Katie, Michael Twycross, Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, Bobo McFoe, Will Schmidt, and Bean the Bread. If you would like to become a patron and gain access to exclusive behind the scenes content on my videos, the link will be in the description. So, what was your inspiration for tonight? Wow. Wow. Wow.